In our last video we went from Naples to Ercolenium, and now we continue on the same track towards Pompeii. From Ercolenium to Pompeii it takes 21 minutes. From the train station of Ercolano, in order to get to Pompeii, just take the train that goes to Sorrento. The final destination should be Sorrento. Don't take any other train because they might not stop in Pompeii. Here we are, 20 minutes after, we are at Pompeii Scavi, Villa de Misteri train station to go visit Pompeii. Here we are folks, in front of the entrance for Pompeii. We bought the skip the line tickets online, seems that today was not necessary, but you never know. Maybe if the trains is going to pick up again, you probably get the skip the line. So here we are in the Portico dei Teatri. This uh, initially was the place where people can come and have a drink and have uh, something to eat in between shows because behind us we have two theaters, the big one and the small one. After a big earthquake in, 60, in the year 66 after Christ, um, this was severely damaged and when they rebuilt it, it became like a place for gladiator to um, train before the show. And here we have the big theater, and now we're going to see the small theater. So this is the small theater. The shape of the theater is interesting because it had two functions. One, to, to allow everybody to see what was going on on the stage, and second, the acoustic. So even today, if you go in the middle of the theater and you clap your hand, everybody can hear you. Here we have a typical Pompeii road cross for pedestrians. And as you can see, there's a big stone, so pedestrians can walk on these stones. And that had a very specific use, uh, because these roads were like filthy with the um, horse excrements and water. People can cross the street without getting mud and horse feces on their feet. Well, folks, you might wonder what that red uh, writing is over there on the wall. That's electoral propaganda for some candidate to get elected. Here you can see that Pompeii as well was built on top of an older city and here are the ruins of what was be, um, below Pompeii and was pre-Roman. You remember earlier when we visited Ercolanium I showed you the altar of the um, ancestor and this is an, another example of an altar of an ancestor in this villa. And clearly this uh, owner of this house was quite wealthy because he had his own private bath. So every Roman villa had the same shape and the same structure. This is the main entrance and here was an area to collect the um, rainwater. The rainwater was going down that little pipe in the well over there for the um, for time when there was not enough water. This is um, the main intersection of the two main road of Pompeii. This one is Via Stabiana, which is, was going north to south, and this one, east-west, was Via della Bondanza. So these are the two main roads, the equivalent of uh, the modern Main Street of any North American city. But folks, how do you recognize a home from a store in Pompeii? Well, a store has this interesting line here, 
These are the lines where they actually they put the doors to close the store at night when the store was closed, while a house did not have this. This is another very interesting uh, little fact about Pompeii and the Roman city in general. As you can see here in the, on, on the stones, you have a carving of a phallus. The, there are two main reasons about, for this. One is because it's a symbol of uh, prosperity and uh, wealth and good luck. And second is pointing straight to the brothel, which is that, that way. So you can miss it. Well, folks, we reached the Forum. This, this was the political and religious center of Pompeii. Behind us, you had the Temple of jo Jovis, or Jupiter. And behind, you can see Mount Vesuvius. This column were actually two levels. And behind us, in this part, you see City Hall. And this behind me is the Basilica. Basilica, back in the Roman times, was the, was the place where actually there's the tribunal and the Magister was the um, judge and was sitting over there slightly above the other people and was um, judging and doing his ruling from there. Here you can see some official measure for grains and liquids. And this is the equivalent of a doormat. And here you can recognize a restaurant from our previous video about Herculaneum. Well, folks, this is the famous brothel of Pompeii. Unfortunately, now it's closed due to the pandemic and it's not possible to visit. But when it's going to be open, that's something that actually is really interesting to see. And just across the street from the brothel, you had another fast food. I'll leave it to the Romans. And near the brothel, you have the bath. And the air is more political propaganda. Here we are, just outside the Pompeii Amphitheater, uh, where they used to have gladiators and the shows. Let's go take a look. Here we are inside of the Roman Amphitheater of Pompeii. Here it used to be like where they used to have fights between gladiators. Gladiators were like special slaves that used to fight each other and sometimes they're very, very cruel, and they end up with the death of one of the gladiators. Um, the amphitheater is pretty big, as you can see, and they used to have like seats all over, all the way up. And most of the time, this amphitheater used to have a special canopy that was used to have a shade over the spectator here in the tribunes.
Well, folks, if this is your first time in Pompeii, you should really consider hiring a guide because it's so big and so overwhelming that if you do it yourself, it, you can miss something. Actually, you're going to miss a lot. For example, our great guide Vincenzo took us like everywhere in no time and he showed us exactly what he wanted to show. Thank you, Vincenzo. It was great. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, folks, this is the end of a day in Herculaneum in Pompeii. How was that? Um, Herculaneum was, was wow, I, I have no words. You could see easily how people lived, where people lived, what their homes looked like, how rich they were, um, and unfortunately where they perished. Uh, it tells quite, quite, a, quite a story. Here in Pompeii, the ruins are not quite as, as um, they're not quite as restored. They're not quite, but you have to use your imagination a little bit here in Pompeii. But um, it's still a very beautiful place to see. So, folks, in Pompeii in the Mediterranean, one day is very possible. Set aside three hours each, plus half an hour in between for the transportation. Uh, keep in mind that taxi driver try to sell you a packet for Pompeii and Herculaneum, but they only allow you one hour in Herculaneum and two hours in Pompeii, so you have to rush a little bit. If you decide to do that, uh, be sure to buy the ticket in advance, because buying the ticket sometimes takes a long time, because the line in the ticket office is quite long. So keep that in mind and enjoy. Well, folks, we are back at the train station waiting for our train back to Naples. I hope you enjoyed our tour of Pompeii and Herculaneum. If you did, please subscribe and leave a comment.